and welcome everybody to the inaugural running of the Desperate Housewives Handicap. Lovely day here at the Far Lap Raceway, Timaru. As you can see, huge, huge turnout for this event. Thousands turned away, sure to become quite a popular event over the years. And now if we just head to the field, first up Easy Lay by Birthday Boy's Dream out of You Wish. Oldest competitor in the field, but knows a way around the track. $12 for the win, $2.75 for the place. Next up, Buzzies, a three-year-old chestnut, trained and occasionally ridden by Simon Matson, Carrying a lot on top, but noted for her stamina. Paying $8 for the win, $1.75 for the place. <laughs> Liquid Spice, four-year-old blonde mare by Vodka Shots out of Spice Girls. Tends to use all of the track and maybe out a step in the final run home. $18 for the win, $3.50 for the place. Next up, Morning Delight, four year old Bay Mare by Dawnbreaker out of Early Riser. I'm told she runs extremely well after an early morning workout, paying $25 for the win and $5 for the place. Just after her, Sam Booker returns. Five-year-old Black Mare by Chucky out of Sam Booker well, Shots. Heck. A fast, sleek runner, but has problems uh, with pacing herself. A good sprinter, but often runs towards the rails. $15 for the win, $2.50 for the place. <laughs> Nicholas, four-year-old uh, Palomino by Going Commando out of Bend on Free Zone. Rumoured to have the cleanest stable in the field, but doesn't like to bid. Could be a surprise package at $35 for the win and $7.50 for the place. Alcohol doesn't affect me. Three-year-old filly. One of a good crop of fillies from the Barry Ward stables. Half-sister to the well-performed Oompa Loompa. Has a quiet demeanour, but that belies a competitive spirit at $40 for the win, $7.50 for the place. Eight is enough. Uh, appears to be very eager to finish the race by the looks of it. Um, by postponed vasectomy out of just one more could be a very strong contender uh, well supported at $15 for the win and $4.50 for the place <laughs> Celtic <laughs> Philly, three year old Bay Philly the youngest in the field was the warm favourite on fixed odds until the Hamill Syndicate placed a bet on her once this was seen by the other punters her odds lengthened considerably Oh, and uh, the last classic Caesar, two-year-old gelding, the only male in the field, a fact he seems to be well aware of, uh, likely to be henpecked and may not get a good run. Uh, in every sense of the word, a roughly at $100 for the win, $20 for the place. Yes, um, as you can see, uh, has five legs, uh, unlike most horses in the field. And as you join us on the start line, I can tell you that uh, both the track conditions and the field uh, listed at easy. Uh, this was to be a wait for age event, but the entrants were unwilling to disclose this information. Oop, Celtic Philly taking a bit of time to get in, get assembled on the line. Here she is joining again. And I think we're ready, about ready for a start. Oop, and Buzzy's out in front, as you'd expect. Hang on, hang on, no, false start. Although the start may be false, I'm, ass I'm assured that the Buzzies are not. And now they're back in line again. And we should be away. And we are away. And you're going to just run past and me. Just run right past the, the camera. Uh, seem to be taking a bit of time to settle in. Classic Caesar seems to be limping along all right. Um, also speaking of limping, Sam Booker returns. Struggling along. And as they make their way down the back stretch. Oh, uh, Nicholas seems to be um, divesting herself of uh, some apparel. I'm sure the stipendary stewards will have something to say about that. <laughs> Returning to the race, and oh yes, uh, Sam Booker returns, not looking too healthy, but alcohol doesn't affect me. Yes, coming to her aid. Well, well done. And again, rejoining the race, and we're coming along, and up oh, eight, eight is enough, is pulled up, Good. and Morning Delight goes in to help. Not quite sure what's going on, but oh, look at this. We have an addition to the field. Congratulations to eight is enough. And coming along about uh, a thousand metres to go, and oh, this looks like something of a musical interlude from Liquid Spice and Celtic Philly. 
and they rejoin the field. Oh, and it seems as though Buzzies is bearing off, and uh, oh my goodness, no, a bit of a race going oh, yes tits up, is. but this is ridiculous. But luckily she regains her composure and her clothing and rejoins the field. Oh, 800 metres to go, and oh, oh dear, Classic Caesar seems to be in a bit of trouble here. Seems to be caught up with uh, Morning Delight and Easy Lay. Or perhaps it's some form of equine gangbang, difficult to say. The other two break away, but oh, Classic Caesar struggling a bit there. Might not finish the race. Oh, Nicholas here. Oh, she's found another pair to divest herself off. Uh, yes, uh, very frilly, very nice. And here we are into the fi final 400. It looks like Morning Delight has come to the front. Nicholas is there, Liquid Spice trailing through. But it's Morning Delight bursting to the front. Nicholas, Liquid Spice there or thereabouts. It's Morning Delight's to lose. But oh, who's this coming from the inside? It's Easy Lay, and Easy Lay gets there on the line just ahead of Morning Delight. Liquid Spice, Nicholas and Celtic Philly following. Looks like eight is enough, and Buzzy's just bringing up that part of the field. Oh dear, Sam Booker returns and alcohol doesn't affect me, will just make it to the line and that just leaves the lone straggler of the field, Classic Caesar, obviously hasn't recovered from that uh, gangbang uh, on the 800 metre mark and uh, has given up the ghost. But And here's the final, final few metres of the race, as you can see, bit of a dosy do there but easy lay just ahead of Morning Delight by a uh, by half a length. Oh yes, a classic. Look at that. <laughs> so the winner of the inaugural Desperate Housewives handicap, Easy Lay, leading in Morning Delight and Liquid Spice. The odds for you there: Easy Lay, twelve dollars for the win, two dollars seventy-five for the place. Morning Delight, five dollars for the place, and Liquid Spice, three dollars fifty. Your Cornella was sixty dollars, and your Trifecta was two hundred and ten dollars. And here they are lining up, and the uh, Grand Poobar S presenting the sash to Easy Lay. And there are your three place getters. Oh, and uh, we think we have discovered why Easy Lay was able to make a, a mad dash at the end, obviously not carrying as much weight as we had originally thought. <laughs> And uh, just crossing to some earlier events in the race, a bit of a bit of a disconcerting episode here. I'll just cross to our cameraman, Peter Burt. Uh, what were you thinking at this stage, Peter? Uh, not thinking too much, actually. Uh, as you can see, uh, I thought my lens had cracked. In fact, it, it, it was looking down at the Grand Canyon there at one stage. Yes, as that does remind me I have to buy some batteries on the way home. Um, some double Ds, I think. And uh, I think as we see it going away, there was a bit of an eclipse there as well. Interesting one here. What did you make of that there, Pete? Uh, very frilly, um, and certainly I haven't seen lace stretched that far before in my life. Yes, uh, certainly reminded me of my grandmother's uh, lace curtains, although, as you point out, um, they certainly weren't as stretched as that. Definitely got definitely got form for for taking them off, though. Look at that. Um, see the approach and, and flicking them on the lens. Yes, and this was probably one of the more uh, touching moments in the race. We had uh, an addition to the field from Eight is Enough, and um, also a special mention to Morning Delight, who stopped to lend a hand. Yes, she, she went straight to the crease there. Yes, uh, notice from Eight is Enough, it was a good, good approach to the crease, good smooth delivery, and uh, I think that should trouble the batsman. Oh, hang on, I think uh, we're straight into the lead. Yes, yes, but look at that, and out it comes, showing showing great delight any second now. You'll see that she's obviously been there and done that, uh, been in that area, obviously. Yes, yes, um, she was very, very quick to give a hand or two. That's exactly right, exactly right. And um, our congratulations go out to the uh, mother and foal. And I think, oh yes, this was uh, another special mention here for Alcohol Doesn't Affect Me. She could obviously see that uh, Zambuka Returns was struggling, but she thought, no, I'll jump on that grenade. Give give that here, I'll, I'll deal to that. And you can see that the approach straight up. Look, you can see that you know the daughters must have inherited that. Straight down, not to be outdone. She does it again and again. And there she was to help uh, Zambuka Returns. Indeed, and galloping away in a straight line, even more remarkable.
And yes, another unusual, unusual event uh, in the race here. We had a bit of a musical interlude from Celtic Philly and Liquid Spice. Um, I seem to recall that there was a similar incident uh, in a race involving these two at the Old Old Mill Theatre handicap several years ago. Exactly. Handicap was the uh, case in that occasion, I believe. Yes, I believe so. Although it was uh, refreshing to see that uh, Liquid Spice was actually uh, in time um, for this particular event. Indeed, and helped by her partner again there in crime. And where she goes, the Celtic. Happy birthday, Brian! That's it.